Let's see if this isn't a complete disaster. All right. Talk chat. Live chat. Let's see how this goes. All right. This right there. All right. In case people want to listen to me talk. What am I doing? What happened? Sure. Let me see. Oh, there it is. Turn on. There we go. Nope. Live chat, please. Okay. Done. Okay. Hey, 
It's been a while since I've done this, so pardon me as I'm just trying to get stuff set up here, make sure everything is looking okay. All right. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Let's go with some comics. Got my caffeine here. We got page up here. Um, actually, let me pop down here. We probably don't need. Let me move this and oh, let's move you down. Let's move you down. Let's go ahead and cut off. Oh, nope. Hmm. There we go. Um, nope. Crap. Manual. Oh, you want me to do that kind of crapping? No, no, no. Okay. Let's just get back to streaming. Let's get back to work. Uh, So I came in, I already did the, the flatting process a couple days ago, just laying down the basic colors and <clears throat> sort of layouts. So now all I really have to do is go in and put on the shadows and the highlights, and I think I also have to put in the, the word balloons. Yes, I do. So we'll do a page here and see how it comes together. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the chat. Um, I will look over, try to answer them as quickly as possible. to get in pretty close <clears throat> even though it's probably not worth it either for the printed page or for the website because they're I think the actual size is probably something like that maybe a little bit bigger so working too closely on details is actually not doing anybody a lot of favors So, my comic is pretty monochromatic, and so I don't work too heavily in terms of, um, no, I don't work too much in trying to represent realistic shadows and colors and stuff like that. Realistic shadows, I, I, I care about light source and stuff like that, but I don't, I know that shadows aren't black, um, and are often more like a blue or or kind of a violet kind of color um, but since this is pretty monochromatic I, I use black to just sort of put all the block sort of shadows down and what you'll see later is that once I'm done with that I actually just lighten the opacity um, but I, I, I I'm pretty good at seeing stuff uh, seeing how shadows fall and I like to just lay out the big block of shadows So I can actually see how it adds to the sort of dr the drama of the scene and then an, uh, 
even though they'll be lightened up quite a bit, they uh, they will still retain a bit of that drama. All right. So example, that's kind of <clears throat> it's probably what I'll do for him because the light is basically kind of coming in from this direction and this direction. And so I'm trying to match that as much as possible. Uh, and so what I do here is I go to my shadow layer and I just decrease to like a native 50%. That is not the right layer. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. <laughs> there we go. Boop. And then for my comic, I delete any of the color that's underneath it to kind of give it that flattened. Whoops, I don't need to save that. Actually, I do need to save that. Let's see. It wants me to save. Because Photoshop crashed a bit earlier. So it recovered my file. Yay. Okay. Save all the time. Save all the time. Luckily, I haven't had a loss of a file in a very long time because I'm pretty paranoid when it comes to saving. All right. <coughs> Excuse me. Highlighting I'm not as confident with. The way I'm kind of doing it for this comic is really just kind of highlighting the, the ridges as different planes stick out from the face. I also tend to overdo it. Yeah. Let's do something like that. There we go. That looks okay. <laughs> I don't know. I'm sorry if I make it dizzy with all the zooming in and zooming outs, but I like to see the piece, not only up close, but from afar. I make, I make a lot of changes based on, oh yeah, this looks weird from way back here. <clears throat> I don't know why I have my headphones on. Huh. Oh well. I'll leave them on. <laughs> it's a comfort thing. Again, if you're in the chat, or if, if you are signed into your YouTube account or Google account, feel free to uh, just say hi in the chat or ask any questions if you have them. Um, I'll answer anything about my comic, about drawing comics, about writing comics, about all that fun stuff. I'm a little worried about making people too shiny. You know what? Maybe I should just go bold here and just boom, boom. Let's see how this looks. Boom. Yeah, that could work. Hold on. That might be too bold. Okay. <clears throat> the one thing I'll say about drawing is that it's mostly, you can be confident as you want. I think it is still mostly just a guessing game. Just kind of figure out what looks good and what you need. And I think that's pretty much all I need for this panel. I'm dumb. 
Oops, that's a, a bit bold. Bethel. There we go. stuff. Gosh, I don't know about the big block of highlights. Maybe if I do something like this, and then I come down. Uh, for those that may be wondering, how this is working. I have my original line art. Let's just go through this real quick, how I set up my, my page. My, my original line art is a bottom layer here. And what I do is I separate the line art from the actual sort of white background. So, um, so it looks like this, kind of see-through. And then I have that above everything else. So beneath that, I have my color breakdowns for each panel uh, in these little, if you can see in the bottom right hand corner, these little folders here. Um, and it makes it really easy because I don't have to worry about going over the lines. Like I can take this brush here with loaded with white and just go nuts and not worry about ruining the line art because it's, oh, it's over all the colors so um, it's worked for me it's how I've done it for a while at this point I think it's probably the same process I used when I was doing my last comic Ebon 07 it's been a while 2013 was when that comic ended all right I think that panel is done lock it down all right, so for the colors, I have things separated out. I got Long John's colors by himself. Oop, don't need that. Long John's colors by himself, and then he, the background is into is in two layers here, just for the sake of making things as easy as possible. And if I screw up just one thing, I don't screw up the entire background or something. So I see here that some of my coloring on Long John went a bit over the lines sticking out on the edges here, which is probably just me being a nit, nitpicky artist. But I like things to be as, oops, like things to be as, let's make this a little smaller, as crisp and accurate as possible. Um, I'm gonna fix an errant line here. Do, 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 do. Now, little fixes like this I do on Photoshop, but my mantra has basically been everything that ends up drawn on the page um, goes onto the screen. But if there are, like I said, like little errors like that, I, I usually fix those because they don't really add to the veracity or the quality of the comic. So, like I said earlier, this is basically a monochromatic comic. I use, I think, let's just go through them. I, I use a very limited range of colors. I use this beige. So that's kind of like a base color of the comic, this beige right here. And uh, um, I use gray, usually 50% gray. Um, white, black, and then this a brown I can show you right here. This is kind of this is the brown I, I use, and there's some slight variations throughout. I my my the scale I use for my grays has gotten much more open over time because I want things to be a little less <laughs> monotone. But the nice thing with keeping with a limited color range is that. The choices of what things should be it becomes much easier. So the way I, I tend to flatten 
or not flattened, but flat colors, basically just lay down the, the basic colors on a page, is that I, I start why, by just put, making everything beige. And uh, kind of build off of that, how to make, make, making choices that will make certain aspects of the panel pop out. For example, like the background here for Long John, he's standing in front of some trees. <clears throat> and I wanted to make clear that they were, if not trees, at least there's some depth there. And so I made the, the trees actually a lighter gray and then sort of the, the deeper forest behind him a dark gray. Um, just to make, establish him some light depth and to make, and, and I made them gray so that his beigeness pops out a bit more. Okay. So I've got my shadow layer here. Let's go ahead and lay these down. So again, I just throw down um, just a flat black here. Because um, I like to see how the shadows look, dramatically speaking. I, I tend to like melodrama in my art. Um, I, I'm, in my art. I'm still a little, not ashamed, not ashamed at all, but more like hesitant to use the word, the capital A art with my the stuff I do, probably because I like melodrama and I know I'm not the most patient guy when it comes to drawing. And so one of the easiest ways to create melodrama in art is to drop shadows onto it. I'm a big fan of, you know, like the Baroque paintings um, and sculpture specifically. Uh, my huge influences on me when I was actually learning how to draw were people like, well, obviously like the, the chiaroscuro artists like Caravaggio, but more specifically, I really like um, Velasquez, Spanish painter. Um, his stuff is gorgeous. And the, the sculpture work of Gian Lorenzo Bernini is just outstanding. Um, how his sculptures actually cast shadows um, are breathtaking and the way he gives the impression of texture and, and, and skin and fabric it carved in marble it just blows my mind every single time I'm glad there's no camera on me or else I'd stop and just start flipping through Bernini books because his stuff is awesome so He's on the edge of the forest. In the last page, he was he was slightly Long John was slightly covered in the shadows from the leaves, but I, I'm gonna have him out a little bit further. So I don't think I'm gonna do those sh leaf shadows. Um, but he still is gonna have a pretty harsh shadow cast upon him. Oops, that is not the color I'm looking for. Okay. So again, if you um, are logged into a Google account, uh oh, what's going on? Okay. Okay, you can talk in the chat, ask questions, here knocking and stuff like that is because there's some work going on at my house that also might mean they the doorbell rings or something I might have to go address the situation <clears throat> and my dog might bark because it's kind of his thing is Rusty even in here there he is sleeping cool beans all right so I'll shut up for a while.
shadow is much bigger than. Nope. Try to keep things somewhat balanced here. Hello, hands. Oops. Okay. I like to put in since he's wearing long johns. I like to put a little flex all over him of pilled fabric. All right. Now again, like I did before, I like to we're gonna drop it down to fifty percent. Well, actually. Let's highlight it, bonk, and then delete the beige. So, oh, actually, before I delete the beige, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna copy the beige. Drop it down below. Okay. All right, where was I? I'm gonna drop this down to 50%. Hooray. All right, now we're gonna do the white highlights here. Hmm. Oops. I'm not being very precise here because I do want to give the impression of fabric that is not, you know, it's not, she's not wearing spandex like you'd find superheroes wear. So I wanted to create not necessarily a sense of it being too loose, but at least of it having a little bit of heft in its own right and a little bit of sag. Sounds like my last doctor visit. That's good enough. Now, cut out some uh, of those same flecks I added out of the white, just to kind of break it up a little bit. Because if you have like pills, like pilled fabric on uh, on you, it would basically cast a shadow. And it would also catch light, because it's standing off of the surface. It's a little detail I like to add, and it's fairly easy to do. I like the effect that it gives. Oftentimes it's not about mirroring exactly how fabrics would look, but at least giving it the impression 
that it is not that, that there are different textures um, at play here. I'm going to do a little something else here. Bulk, there we go. Okay. Now I'm going to do something a little weird. I'm going to put a little overlay on here <clears throat> just to kind of give it a little more depth. And so I'm highlighting specific areas because I don't want my, the hands or arms to be affected, but I want to make it look like there's a little more shadow coming down here without doing big blocks of of, of gray. And so I create a new layer over the beige, just the beige portion, which I've cut out the, the portions where the shadow were. And um, I'm going to do a gradient. So uh, not, a, not a bucket like that. I'm going to do a gradient like that, right? So I'm actually going to cut out a little bit more here. This is where I get to play with sort of uh, blending op blending options. That might be a little too much, a little too much. Oops, <laughs> that's not the one I want at all. There we go. All right, so <clears throat> I've got this, and I've got it right over the beige layer. I'm going to make a clipping mask, which means the only stuff that will show is the stuff that, that this gradient layer is attached to, which would be the beige layer right beneath it. So bunk. So there's still you still see the gradient here, but it looks weird. It's underneath the highlighting. I want it to be present, but not, um, but not weird looking like this. So I go to this blending options over here, and I found that I use the the overlay one a lot, which kind of warms it a little bit. And so I'm actually going to cut away a little bit here. <clears throat> um, move it down a little bit. Make this eraser a little bit bigger. Um, so it, it has this kind of weird warmth to it. I'm actually going to lower the opacity a little bit so it's not as obvious, but still enough to make a difference. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. I might even do a little bit of that. Nope, that's too much. That is way too much. Okay. So that's long, John. There's a little bit of overlap here I want to get rid of. Okay. Good enough. And for the background, I don't really know how much I want to do. So I'm going to go clean some stuff up here. I'm using a photo, the uh, Adobe Photoshop CC. It's like their, you know, their their monthly service. I find it works. It works well enough for my purposes. All right, <clears throat> so I got two layers of the background. What I could do, what I'm thinking about doing is. This, this, this is where we just get to play around a little bit, doing some more of that creative clipping mask stuff. I can have fun. Oh, this is going to be like a weird... Um, what's the word? Trick of the eye here. Kind of looks cool though. That might be all I do for that one. I was also thinking of doing something like, let's get rid of this. Something like this. Oops, that's the wrong one. Cutting away sort of the borders just around the trees, but I've been doing that a lot this chapter and I don't want it to look like too much of a crutch. But the effect is pretty cool. I don't know. I don't think so. Plus it makes him pop a little bit more. All right. Panel three. We got this dude. 
who is holding a gun wrong. It's holding it by the barrel <clears throat> instead of the handle. Okay. I have to clean up some dirty lines here, some pencils that sh that came through. Didn't erase entirely. I ra I draw using blue leaded pencils, which in theory are not supposed to scan. And for the most part, they don't. But I draw with a pretty heavy hand, so. I'm not surprised, and I, and I redraw a lot, so I do lots of erasing and redrawing, and the blue leaded pen, geez, Dan, the blue pencils are pretty waxy, so they don't erase really well. It's kind of a give and take working with blue lead. I don't like having dirty pictures. Some of these pages are really gross. A lot of it came through. But this one is not too bad. Oops. All right. <clears throat> so I'm gonna start with the dude. Wait. Oh, okay, sorry. There he is. Um, so, for this, we're looking down at him. So the light is going to be coming from this direction and kind of down. So the shadows are going to be cast kind of like that. And so some of him is going to be really heavily shadowed. And some parts of him are going to be casting shadows onto him. So, for instance, like this arm is above this arm so in theory there could be like a shadow going over it like that interesting um, so let's, let's give it a shot and even like he's partially behind the door here door jam and so that that could be casting a shadow like that oops like that and even we could kind of bring it over the hat there Right? And so the same for this. And then his head is casting a shadow. Whoops, don't highlight everything. I don't need to do that. Get rid of the seams there. And the, that's casting a shadow. Go ahead and do that. This little divot, dimple, I guess is the correct word, in his hat proper is casting a shadow. All right. I could even probably broaden his head shadow a little bit. Try to sort of offset some of the shadows on his clothes because it's not just a flat plane going across. This is a you know a lapel that folds over the actual jacket itself. So I probably could just draw a straight line across and it doesn't matter because at least from this distance it's it'll all probably look it would all look fairly uh, the same. But it also by offsetting it a little bit, it creates a bit more dynamic uh, composition here. So, I'm going to come in on the back end of his arm here to kind of bring that shadow in so that the shadow of the room is kind of creeping in on his arm there. Um, and his arm is casting a shadow across his body, but also... If this, if he's kneeling, then the jacket here is bulging, like kind of bending up over his chest, casting a shadow onto his chest. 
me just fill this in so I don't get lost, so I don't get lost. And I always have this folds shadowed there. So we're kind of doing two jobs here as one. Okay. And so yeah, I, I think I'm gonna have his arm cast a shadow over his leg here. And then we can even, whoops. I got mail. Nope. All right. Mm. Okay. Okay. So there's a slight shadow going up there. Uh oh. He moves. Oh, he's just going to his bed. Right there. That's probably good enough for that. And now the gun. Put a little bit through the barrel. Probably try to make that a straight line. And I do want attention to be drawn to what he's holding, so I don't want to shadow it too much. I don't want the shadow to, since it's going to be very small on the page, as you can see. I don't want to obscure any important details that let people know that it is a pistol. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm also going to do the folds here. So I got, I'm guessing his, his actual shoulder is kind of up against the jam here. So I'm going to have some of the shadow from the jam coming in over here. And... <clears throat> oh, okay. Okay, so I think his coat is basically done. Like his upper body, I should say, is actually done. Yeah, I'm okay with that. So I think I kind of got carried away with the coloring in the last chapter or last issue I started making things too people and, 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 and objects a bit too diverse in terms of the colors I was using it, it inhibited not necessarily readability it looked good on the page but it um, one it made things very take much longer to draw and to color and it got away from why I wanted to color it this way, that I want things to be simple. I want, I want there to, I, I wanted it, I think the, the language I used on the site when writing about it was, I want it to be, um, not representative coloring, but interpretive coloring was, I think that was the language I used. But the idea that this color of gray will always be the color of his jacket, although I basically follow those rules, but the idea that I, I'm, I want to use colors more to express the mood and tone of the page rather than relying on sort of a color guide uh, because I want I want if I wanted strictly representative color then I would have done a color comic right and this is not that it's a very restricted palette, and so I should take advantage of that as much as possible. So there should also be another fold here, something like that. There we go. I like that. Oops. 
Cool, cool, cool. Mario Day. Chill out. Cool. Oh, I thought someone was knocking at the door briefly. But if someone were knocking at the door, my dog would be barking his brains out. So. All right. Um, let's add a little bit of color to side of the holster here. Cool, cool, cool. Go away. I should turn off notifications. All right. Okay. Oh my goodness, it is email time. All right, so I'm also going to throw down some shadow that he's casting upon the ground. And you can see it's really messy, really sort of hatchy, and so I'm not going to be particularly careful with it. Because I don't want the coloring to necessarily clash with the line work. <clears throat> and by doing it this way, it'll actually look, I'm thinking, a little bit better in the long run. Man, I don't know if I need that shadow. If anything, I should do, be pulling the shadows from over this direction and like that. That looks ugly. So this is more what I should be doing. Yeah, we'll see how it looks. All right, so what else is the beige here? Okay, it's just him. Cool. So I'm do what I did before. Do that. And then let's drop it down. That looks pretty okay. Oh. I should hold on. Do this again. Sorry. This is going to look a little weird. It's just a safeguard against some future issues that could surface. Oh, uh, actually, yeah, it shouldn't. It shouldn't be a problem. Cool. Boom. All right, let's do some highlights here. Trying to give the hit the sense that he's not all the way out the door, so I don't want to plaster him with too much highlighting here, but enough to show that he's not also completely inside the house or the cabin. So I think let's try going along the edge here, see what that looks like. If I can just keep on the line. Oops.
can imagine his neckerchief there is some sort of silk or something like that. While I'm streaming, I realize how important music is to <laughs> the drawing process. Well, for this part. It's funny, when I'm actually drawing, um, especially when it comes to laying out, <clears throat> laying out pages and whatnot, dead silence. Same thing when I write, I want dead silence. Because I am not very, I'm very easily, I'm very good at getting distracted. And so, um, especially as a person that plays instruments with a limited degree of ability, I could easily see myself being like, oh, I want to play guitar now. So, stop drawing, start playing guitar when I should be drawing. You know what, Bethel? Let's just do this. Um, B. This is that should be good enough. If I want a straight line, I'll just make a straight line <laughs> instead of trying to fake it with the natural arc my hand tends to have. Cool beans. Now I'm gonna do one more thing. Uh, let's do this. Kind of what I did with Long John up, up, upstairs. Um, but uh, on the panel above, I'm going to. Oh, that is not what I wanted to do at all. I'm gonna put a little gradient over him, but try to avoid the gun, because otherwise it would get pretty. There we go. I should also get another hand here. Okay. And then we'll create a clipping mask to his section. And let's go ahead and erase. So basically trying to create a sense of that shadow creep from uh, from the dark house. By having it kind of, for lack of a better word, glow onto him. Um, Can I have it just creep over his shoulder? And just knock it down to like that much. There we go. So it's just very subtle, but it's enough to make a difference. I'm just gonna cut some areas where I probably wouldn't be too prominent. Like the stuff closest to the sun. There we go. That works for me. Dude, apparently one o'clock on a Saturday is when the emails like to show up. Okay. So. Juan John's done. Hooray. What next?
I got it broken up into sort of just like the outside wall of the house. And I've got um, the door and I've got the ground. Which one do I want to do first? It should all be pretty easy. Oh man. I can't wait to get to this panel. This is going to be easy. But anyway, so this is the hardest. This is probably the hardest panel of the page, just because there's a lot going on. This probably it was most definitely the hardest one to draw as well. Well, let's just do the door. All right. Cool, cool, cool. So again, the sunlight's coming from that way. I don't really know if we'd see the shadow from his knee onto the door. But let's just put a little bit in there anyway. Cool. Done. Moving on. Let's just do the big strokes here. As you see, kind of the shadow coming in from the door jam. What I tend to do is I just block it out like this so I can just highlight it and then dump a bunch of black in there. Cool beans. And then I, from there, I can kind of do more of the uh, detail-based stuff. So, like, there's planks here dividing the door, so I'm going to put in some shadow between those seams. But probably not a whole lot else. Here's a big seam. I think my brush is a bit too big. I remember what is what here. That's the door jam. Okay. So we're not going to worry about that right now because we're just focusing on the door. Do some more straight line stuff here. Bam. Going over to my mouse instead of using my the pen on my tablet for my tablet. Because if you hold down shift and then click where you want the line to go with the mouse, it draws a straight line. So if I put a dot there and go anywhere else on the page and just hold down shift and then touch the, uh, or click again, boom. Oh, well, it went behind it, so yeah. Boom, boom, boom. So that's what I'm doing. All right. Um. Like a little bit of shadow from this board that's locking all the planks together. Okay. Oops. So I'm just going to go in and erase some of the overlap here so as to not cause any artistic confusion. So with the door as well, I'm probably going to do some more of that gradient. Oops, <laughs> that's not what I wanted to do. Do some more of that fun gradient stuff to create a sense of depth. Should I do it with the overlay thing? No, that doesn't look good. And just drop down the uh, opacity quite a bit. That works. Good enough for government work. As a state employee, I'm offended at my comment. Okay. And then I might actually just do a slight highlight. Oh man, the perspective got a little wonky here. Just ignore it. Just ignore it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know exactly what's going on with this door, but the door is not what is important. Hmm. 
Okay. That's something I don't usually do, but uh, drop the highlight, the opacity of the highlight a little bit. Gosh, I like, almost went like fisheye lens on this thing. Huh. Well. I could also do this. It might look bad. Let's just see how it, how it goes. Oops. It's not someone knocking on the door. Oh, that's what I could do as well. Do, 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 do. His thumb would be casting a shadow, everybody. That is not the right color for that. There we go. Would it? Again, lights go. Oh, it would be more his hand that's casting the shadow, not his thumb. Cool. All right. That's good enough for me. Okay. Um, so that's. Oh, okay. And then we got the ground. Oh, wait. Oh, no. I still need to do the foreground as well. But we can do the ground. No, let's do the foreground first. Uh, so, again, that means the sort of outer walls here. So, for this, it's more about, I would argue, it's more about just drawing the eye, making choices. to make sure that people are people are drawn to Long John here. Nope. Nope. So I'm doing some more of that um, overlay kind of thing where it takes the, the black shadow I put down there and kind of warms it a bit, makes it a little more red. Um, because I'm not treating it so much like a shadow as I am just sort of trying to break up the, the beigeness of it and draw the eye inward to Juan John. I think I'm okay with that. I'm actually going to do Clipping mask and okay. I could even probably drop that to maybe seventy five percent. That looks a little better. Okay. Where was I? So I think I'm going to put the shadow on the inside the door jam here. Man, that perspective is wonky. But every time you say that, everybody's like, oh, you're the only one that notices. I'm like, well, there are discerning eyes out there that I'm sure would love to give me crap. All right. 
inside of the door jam, and I'll do it out here as well. I don't think I'll put it up there though. And I'll put a little here. And a little bit here to indicate scratches in the wood, cracks, that kind of stuff. That's always fun. I'll also go ahead and do the same thing I did on the door and sort of shade in the seams between the planks that secure, or that make up the wall. Also give some sort of purpose to <clears throat> having that darker brownish overlay as well. Kind of, it's part of the shadow casting process. Kind of hide a little bit the um, the rhetorical nature of me doing that overlay as a way it means to get people to look at. Um, the main figure and also made but just and to accept that it's also whoops kind of a consequence of shadows wow some scratches and stuff like that oh yeah actually this is supposed to be a bullet hole so make that what you will let's do the same for over here although it is much smaller Got to die. Yeah, I can probably cast a little bit of a shadow here. make the shadows a little bit smaller as we head to the bottom there because of the perspective of this thing. See what that looks like. Probably doesn't need to be that dark. Oh. All right. Some highlights here.
Yeah. And then that's the problem. There we go. This is an old strat, it, just a trick. It doesn't mean anything or represent anything. But something I did just to break up the monotony of walls, specifically. It's just kind of a weird, like, zigzag pattern around the bottom. Again, mostly to just break up the uh, the monotony of the design there's no real physics <laughs> physics based kind of reason for it I don't know if I like those highlights I don't know, man. Tell you what, I'm like, I'm gonna do this. Rather than having blocked highlights like that, I'm gonna do this. I'll move it to the top above that. And go to the tried and true gradient. Maybe that might be a little too much. that though and all right I feel like it's, it's a little bit too homogenous there. And so I'm just going to test something. That's not what I wanted. Is it? Oh. Okay. Woof. That is weird. That is weird. Okay. Huh. I'm trying to make, trying to adjust the the beige of the the walls to be a little darker. No, I don't think I need these. Okay. Um. So just to make Wan uh, uh, John stand out a bit more. There we go. I think that could work. I think that could work. Oops, where are you going? Okay, that's staying there. All right, one last thing for this panel, and that is the ground. And then one more panel after that, and it'll be super easy. All right. So for this, I want the ground to tell you what. Come on, come on. There we go. This is also where we have to trim some overhang. So 
can't paste spell that, but that's okay. Yeah, maybe I should just do that. All right. So I'm just going to kind of put return on some random blotches, for lack of a better word, just to break it up. And make it interesting. Now the nice thing is that the, the the wall is actually over this layer so I can kind of go behind it and not ruin anything that I did before. And so I'm just trying to keep in mind basically that the light's coming from that direction and um, There's no real mistakes that can be made. Because, oop, oh, there's no more, whoop. Because it's all just about getting, giving kind of texture. And, um, Any texture is good texture, I would argue. All right. Let's try to. I assume they're just kind of like piles of dirt, grass, and twigs and stuff. I just want to show it catching some light. Without it making it look slick or glossy, but whatever. Come on, close the loop. There we go. Good morning, Rusty. That was Rusty. Giving the workers outside a bit of business. I think that's pretty much done. I'll be right back. I'm going to go check on Rusty. You just chill. I'm back. False alarm. Okay. That turned out to be a pretty involved panel. Now let's do this last one. Hooray. So, first clean up those lines. And there's some artifacts. All over the place. I saw some actually up earlier. Like right there, gross. Right there, gross. Add a little bit right there. 
I don't like this. I feel like it'd be a little distracting. Whoa. Okay down there, bud? You watch him. Oof. What happened down here? Okay. Oh, man. Okay, shadows. This seems to be bending forward a little bit, so I will... Something like that. Something like that. And these guys look like they're pretty much standing straight up. So we'll just shadow the creases. Now the way the hand is kind of structured, it's interesting. There's basically pads much like a hoof right and then there's these pads that kind of connect the fingers to the palm and so in theory it's the stuff that lies between the pads that is dark because this is in terms of you know this is the valley this is the top of the range i don't know metaphor stuff um so I don't, since he's reaching for the skies, not to use tropes of the genre, um, his, he's probably holding his hands upwards towards the light since it is pretty, you know, midday. So I don't want to... I don't have too much shadow on the hand, but I don't want it to just be super boring either. So I'm just going to envision the palm here being as it's being much more flat than maybe it normally would because he is holding his his hands open um, which does flatten out the palm quite a bit that might be all I need here maybe something like that and then let's go over here Whoops, whoops, slow down. Let's, let's fix some of this beige here. It's a little messy, Bethel, a little messy. Okay. It hands a little wonky, whatever. Do you know it's a hand? Yes, okay. My job is done. I'm just kind of basically hatch a little um, wrist folds. Yeah, what's up, Kitty Cat? Yeah, you want to sit on my lap and then jump off it immediately because you're weird like that? Cat's right here next to me. Hopefully she's just not going to try to eat the microphone. Or...
my stylus. That works for me. Just do my thing to it. Delete fifty percent. Cool beans. I don't headphones are in the way. There we go. <clears throat> All right. Let's do the highlights. All right, so again, we think of highlights, we gotta think of them as objects, and so that it's like a cylinder, it's like a curved cylinder, right? And then kind of going all the way down. And then this one, they're kind of pointing more up. Like that, and so the way I think about it, like the surface area would be, that that's getting light is stuff that's more on top, so look at sort of this diagram it would be like the front of the finger here and then since it's pointing forward a little bit the top most portion of the finger that at least the upper the upmost in terms of the direction that's being pointed the top most portion of the finger will be hit getting the light Right. These are kind of angled. But it's not a whole. Oh, Dan Bethel. That's called drawing on the wrong later. Later? Wrong layer. Hey, Chris. How you doing, bud? You're at work right now. Good for you. Earning, earning money to, you know. make stuff pay bills that fun stuff now i know there's an audience and now i'm freaking out okay so let's since i drew on the wrong layer let's just get rid of the wrong layer okay yes all right let's fix this so going off the same Good for him. Todd McFarlane is directing a new Spawn movie. I bet he wrote it too. Um, I hope it's good. I don't know. I don't want anything to fail, but... <laughs> Does the world need a new Spawn movie? Probably not. Although the original movie ha does have the distinction of being one of those movies where the soundtrack is probably more well known than the movie itself. I'll see you, Chris. Thanks for stopping by. Love you too, bud. Actually, my wife and I were talking about the other day, just sort of movies that have, that are more popular in terms of their soundtracks than the actual films themselves. And even she knew of the Spawn soundtrack, maybe not even recognizing that it was a movie. But that was, it was an interesting soundtrack, right? Because they got like, oops, um, like electronic musicians. to remix metal, metal songs something like that I remember people loving it and uh, I'm, I was happy for them oh, that was bad this 
ich denn da? Coloring this, going into the coloring of this issue, I really looked, spent some time looking back at the choices I made in the very first volume and just kind of how. I don't remember taking, I don't remember being any faster than what I do now, but I do like the look it had of being kind of like the colors, especially the highlighting, looked a lot more like it was etched in rather than placed, kind of like what I'm doing now. Um, so, I mean, it looks fine, right? I, I don't know, I don't think I like the fingertips, because who cares? But now it looks really flat, son of a gun. Drawing sucks. Oop, that's the wrong button. Sorry. Okay. All right. Okay. I think that page is done. But I still have to do. The uh, dialogue balloons. So you get to see how I do that. Oh man, there's a lot of writing on this page. Boo. <laughs> Boo. Maybe I won't do that. No, oh, what the hell? Let's just do it. All right. So I do all the dialogue balloons by hand. And uh, they're all very haphazard. Normally what I wanted to do was not have any sort of outline on the balloons at all, just kind of have them being blots of color or of white. But when you have a very limited color scheme, your balloons get very, get easily hidden. If you're, especially if you're drawing on a, or, or drawing them on a very colorless panel. So you need something to define. And so, you got to come up with a way to do the, the balloons themselves. Ugh. Sorry, a little too, the lines are a little too thin. Let's do this. So these first two pieces of dialogue. Are. Coming from the same speaker. So I'm going to shave off the extra bits here and then connect them. A lot of people do their dialogue balloons in Illustrator. I don't have Illustrator, so F that noise. It's 
So I put the connector on a different layer so I can just kind of cut away the overhang and then go back to the previous layer and then cut away its overhang without erasing the new connector. And so I'm going to do this. All right. There we go. And I just I make them just a little sharp so that they can be a little crisp. And then so not really an exacting science here. Fill in the back with white and call it balloon. That's not still a balloon. Oh 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 one oh one. Final one. Balloon one. And then for long john. Sometimes I just if someone's off panel I just put the person's pant the dialogue balloon for the person off panel in like gray or something like that. I don't know if I want to do that. Boss kind of do. Let's just take a look at it. For off panel speakers unless the person is directly off panel. I don't put a tail on it. Yeah, I don't like that. Maybe if I go like a lighter gray. Maybe have it overlap a little bit. Hmm. No. I don't like that. So I'll just do traditional. probably here but I use a lot of um, keyboard shortcuts. I basically have my left hand on my keyboard and of course my drawing hand holding the stylus. Um, I also use a lot of programmed macros or actions I believe is what Photoshop calls them basically I hold down I'm using a Mac so command F1 command F2 command F3 even though I think all the way through F6 I think uh, do a different thing but the one I the ones I use the most are my programming for F1 F2 F3 and F I use all of them a lot actually but F1 through F4 are the ones I use the most I don't even really know what F5 is. I should look. Oh, that's the big flattener. Okay. <clears throat> so my F1 action is it expands 
the when I make a selection with the magic wand like I did here. I don't know how well you can see it. If I do my my F1 command, it expands it by I think one pixel. That way you can kind of get rid of if if you're inside a if you're filling a space. You can end up with what people call like jaggies, where it's see you can just, there's like a little halo here inside. Um, by using this Alt F1 command, you can do it. Hit Enter twice, or and it covers those up. But I don't know. It's fine. F2 is, F2 creates a new layer. Now there's probably a keyboard command that does that automatically, but it's just easier access for me. Oh man, my shoulder's hurting. Let me raise my chair up. There we go. Um, just an easy way to go into create, to create new layers. F3 is kind of an undo, but if you just hit Control Z or Command Z, it'll only go back, be back one basically, back one action. And then when we press Control Z again, I think it just um, reverts to the previous state. My Command F3 just kind of keeps going up the history. And um, all the way as far as it'll go. So it's just kind of a continual undo. Gosh, I kind of want this over here. No. Put this here. I don't know if it's going to read very well. No, oh, thank you, cat. Hmm. And F4 just kind of deletes everything that's on the layer. do here is something a little weird. I'm going to cross the across the, uh, the panel borders here because his face is so close to the viewer, to the reader. One, it kind of guides the, the reader's eye downward in the direction, so like the way the, the dialogue balloons are here. If, if you catch the tail here, you'll follow that down, and then the way these are set up, you'll jump over here after looking at Long John. You'll follow his arm back up to the dialogue, which will lead you down, blah, blah, blah. Anyway. So, that's why I was kind of messing around with this placement earlier. I'm like, ah, is, this, is there a better place to put this? But I think this actually, whoops, works pretty well. There we go. Sharpen this. Balloon 0201. There we go. Okay.
Like I said, I got a hell of a story. Now, actually, I could probably get away with something here. Because if you look... <laughs> what? Okay. Yeah, there's... I put the sort of black borders around these because most of where they are on the in this panel are very... Um, What's the word? It's very, it's white on white. And so you want to, I want the dialogue balloons to stand out. But here it's over grays. And so what I'm going to do actually is just do what I was threatening to do earlier and kind of what I wanted to do since the beginning of, um, and what I try to do as often as possible, I should say. I try to follow the basic rule of rules of lettering that I've learned over time. Make sure there's a good sort of gutter of space around between the edge of the balloon and the words. Because when they're bumping up against the edge of the balloon, it actually impedes readability. In a comic where you're trying to tell a story, readability is, is absolutely important. So I'll grab that. So we got two two dialogue balloons from for Long John here. I'll come back to that. So, um, we can get him out of the way actually right now. Why not? Why not? No. Uh -oh. Wife's at work on a Saturday. Which is why I'm at work, too. So I'm trying to get this book done by Free Comic Book Day. Well... I'm trying to get this book done before Free Comic Day so I can get it printed and ready to read or to sell on Free Comic Book Day. And so I want to have this book done by the sort of second week of April. I think I'm doing all right in that regard. Hey, Martha. Oh, okay. Lettering. The least exciting part of watching someone draw. Again, if, you ha if you're logged into your YouTube account, or Google account. You can use the chat. I'll gladly answer any questions about things and stuff. So since this is a piece of dialogue of someone that's off panel, I'm actually going to not include the dialogue balloon tail. Even though I did that earlier with the first piece of dialogue in this panel, um, 
I don't want to make the reader or have the reader risk that the reader goes back up to that first panel because I want them to keep going down the page. And so I'm, I want to make the balloon different enough so we know that it's not Long John talking. And so that's why I'm doing the... Um, the white border. I'm sorry, the black border. I want to maybe have it overlap there or something like that. That could be cool. I actually might want to turn this a little bit. There we go. Cool beans. Oh, that's how we. Yeah, oh, you're good. You're good. Okay. Ooh, ooh, this could be cool. Hold on, let me do this. Again, I'm going to cross panels again. Ooh, a little bold there, dude. There we go. One of the most challenging parts of coming up with the comic, or developing the comic, I should say, even though it's ancient history at this point, was, I just, I, even though I did it before, kind of, with my last comic, this one, it, it just with my experience behind me, I put more work into it, but was finding the right font to use for dialogue? Woof. Who knew, man? that how crucial and important that is and and if you think about it you've probably seen enough web comics specifically web comics with um oops bad fonts where it just looks like it was lettered in um microsoft word or something And so it took me, yeah, it, it, it took me a while, but more importantly, it was difficult because I wanted to do fonts for realsies this time. And so I wanted to buy fonts instead of just finding them on the internet. And um, um, oops. And so you can't really try out fonts in that regard. So I'm just sitting there looking at the lettering samples that they have on. I think I, I got mine from... Did I get them from Blambot? I don't remember. Um, oh. Oops, hold on. Um, just looking at the, at the lettering samples they have there, which is usually like a sentence and just the alphabet in both uppercase and lowercase. And... Kind of thinking about the art that you're doing and going, will this actually go well with, oops, oops, with my style? Ugh. Probably an easier way to do this. All right. I think the font I ended up using, no, I know the font I ended up using is something called Fold and Staple. And I like it a lot. My buddy Josh, for his webcomic called Unman, developed his own font, but that's kind of how he's always been. 
way into his uh, just uh, doing everything himself. I remember I used a f just free font maker back in the day, and <laughs> it was pretty bad. But I actually ended up using the font quite a bit because it had that whenever I needed someone to sound maybe like drunk or, you know, a little more scratchy or something like that, I, I would use uh, that font. And I lost it when I got my new computer because I forgot to copy it over before I formatted the hard drive. Hey, yo. So now, um, so I gotta do, oh man, this is gonna be tricky. Tell you what, it won't be tricky. I'm gonna cheat. No, I'm not gonna cheat, son of a gun. going to do some tweaking here. All right. Get down here and smooth this out. There we go. Cool. I don't know if that works because because it's going behind a balloon that doesn't have a border. I don't know. I should just run with it. Ah, I'm fine with it. I'll live with the consequences. I think it's clear. It might not be pretty, but it's clear. Um, cheating. I'll call that. Okay. All right. Whew. When people thought Long John was a silent comic. Those were the days. Ugly. Okay. Oh, I should get back to lady face here. Ready my souls. Everything's still going strong. Cool beans. Long John monologuing. Basically what's going on here is Long John is distracting 
the enemy while also giving not orders but clues to a to his buddy Wanjon as to what sort of strategy of violence they're going to use to get out of this situation. <laughs> kind of like calling out plays in a football game. When Wanjon hears Long John go into talking about this specific myth, he knows what to do. Going off the idea that these guys were very successful, not just bounty hunters, but people of violence, and that they developed these kinds of strategies over time because they worked. And it's also what made them deadly because people weren't catching on. Oh, actually, both the speakers are off screen on this panel. That's pretty funny. Okay. That is Varun. Oh, uh, that's not how you call Varun. O three O two. Okay. But it never made a difference. Now this one, yeah, it's there's no background, so I got to put his sort of what do you call it? Uh, I gotta put his the borders around it. Now I'm actually gonna I'm gonna connect it to this balloon, so we'll see how that works out. That is too big. Okay. Now I could do what some people have suggested and I've, what I've tried um, is just draw the white balloon and then have Photoshop draw in a stroke as it called as it's called basically you can set how big of a border you want it to draw at the edge of the balloon you drew but it never it looks weird it never looks as organic as I want it to looks a little too stilted, a little too blocky. And so, yeah, this takes more time, but I like the look of it more. I'd rather have something look the way I want it to look than simply to cut corners. Mm -mm. Ah. There we go. Alrighty. 
Monologue, monologue, monologue. Actually, don't need my hand hovering over the keyboard right now. Oh my goodness. Mm -mm. But he had none. So what's nice about this panel actually, since it's a white background, I don't have to do like the white balloon or the white fill underneath it which makes things easier one less step I have to take oh my goodness oh a little too close Oops. <clears throat> that works. And then let's do one more. Bring it on home. Okay, so what I want to do is connect. <laughs> I could do this. So we kind of like boom, 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 like that. this kind of and then like this and oops delete the overage And then delete. That's not what it's be. All right. Okay. 
That's dumb. Give me one second. Okay. Delete it. Let's just do that. <laughs> Easier for everybody. Cool beans. Cool beans. And then close all that up. Sharpen, create one more layer, extend this white down there. And then that's it. That's it. Woof. Balloon oh four oh one. We'll call it England. Okay. And that's that's what we're looking at. You know what I might do here? Um now that I'm looking at this. Let's go all the way down to okay then. Move everything up a little bit so that we can see, make sure that we see that this, that these two, that these two, um, oops, balloons are connected and it's not the other guy speaking up again. Okay. There we go. Woof. So that's how I color a page. Took me about a little over two hours to do this. And that's how it goes. Isn't it fun making comics, everybody? Yay. Yay. I want to stop streaming now, but I'm going to go right into, a ne into another one so I can get this done by free comic book day. At which, at which point you'll be able to see this page in the context of everything else in the book. So, uh, thanks for watching. And maybe I'll do this again some other day.